You might have seen the NAD boosting supplements NR and MNM being advertised hard by supplement companies all over social media. But if the enzyme CD38 is high, then that's burning through NAD+, or the other inflammatory enzyme if NMMT, if that's high, then that's diverting nicotinamide away. So effectively, with those two precursors, you're pouring them into a leaky bucket, which is exactly what's been happening to me. So I'm gonna be talking about the two agents for NAD salvage, both 5-amino-1-MQ, and apigenin as uh, in my previous cycle so looking at things i've been running uh, niacin at 50 milligrams a day this is in the form of nicotinic acid the flushing kind and it, i'm from my data it's showing that i'm high in nicotinamide so too much of the precursor but not nr interestingly so it means of course i want to get nicotinamide otherwise known as nam back into around the 50th percentile. And then if you look at the metabolite 2PY, this indicates uh, NAD salvage inefficiency or overdosing with precursors. So that's the reason why I'm reducing my dose of niacin from 50 milligrams down to 25. 2PY is associated with um, arterial uh, inflammation. And that's why niacin in both its forms is a lot cheaper than NMM because if you get the dose wrong, it can drive up both 2PY, as well as the amino acid homocysteine, which is associated with inflammation. But at the 41st percentile for me, it's not really too concerning. Yes, it could be lower, but the one that's jumping out is 1MNA, and that's a metabolite of uh, NMMT, and that's in the 85th percentile. That's, that's truly showing an inefficiency at converting NMA, NAM. So by inhibiting NMMT, otherwise known as nicotinamide N-methyltransferase, you're allowing that NAM to re-enter the NAD salvage pathway. So less of it's being shunted away to wasteful processes, you know, uh, causing problems with methylation and improving just redox balance in general. And at the point of this test, it's been around five months since I've done a cycle of 5-amino-1-MQ, uh, which is a potent NMMT inhibitor. And the cycle I did was a very light one as well, like the bare minimum, so doing 50 milligrams, but only over 30 days. And the reason why I've been particularly light with my cycle 5-amino is because I drink green tea all year round, and a decent amount of it, three big cups a day, and so that's a natural NMMT inhibitor, but clearly there is a genetic element too. I've got a higher risk of heart failure. I've seen you know, green tea in high amounts lower people's NMMT, but for me, obviously, it's not really moving the needle enough. And to touch back on the heart, NMMT expression is typically high when the vascular endothelium is under stress. So by inhibiting it, you can uh, lower arterial stiffening, improve nitric oxide balance as well. NMMT overexpression is also linked with muscle wastage, reduced stem cell activity in those muscle cells. And so it, it can uh, improve those stas satellite cell function. And in animals, even on like a higher calorie diet, they can still like reduce visceral fat, you know, the fat around their organs, like uh, so it has a real anti-obesity facet to it as well. And in mice, it's been shown to improve insulin sensitivity and improve glucose tolerance. And so that crosses perfectly with myself where I'm rebalancing my macros to have a bit, a little bit less protein to help with uh, blood urea nitrogen, keeping that down, supporting the kidneys. And then so inevitably I might have more carbohydrates obviously leaning more towards high fiber complex carbohydrates but still i think five amino may help with any uh, fat driven carb storage and then yeah I'll just be keeping an eye on not just uh, the urea nitrogen but there's other amino acid markers as well as phenylacetylglutamine which can be from the breakdown of the amino acid phenylalanine i've got a high amount of that as well Check out our 12-month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different bar markers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six-month break clause if your situation was to change. So for my next cycle of 5-amino-1-MQ, I'm doing 100 milligrams for 30 days. All my previous ones have been just 50 milligrams over that same time period. I, even, I did it actually not too long ago, just after this test on July 28th. And I remember in that first week, I was getting really, really good uh, low resting heart rate, high heart rate variability. So that shows 
healthy heart contractibility. And I remember my very first cycle of it back in 2023. I remember my energy levels were good during the day, but even in the evening, very constant. And that's great for someone like me who really maxes myself out during the daytime. So it clearly shows there was a lot of NMMT activity back then. But on that subject, yes, you do want to have it low, but epidemiology suggests that you do want to have some level of NMMT. Like the one MNA signaling does have some anti-inflammatory effects for that endothelial lining. So you really, you really want to be in that kind of bottom 10th percentile, so between 5 and 10%. So I'll be retesting my true health. I do them every quarter. So I'll be interesting to see with at least three weeks after my five amino cycle to let things normalize those methylation patterns. And just measuring your level of NAD in silo is not a good idea either, as found out by my past guest, Michael Lusgarden, where he was mega dosing nicotinic acid at a dose of 600 milligrams. And it, yes, it did get his NAD plus to the highest level he's ever seen, but at the same time, his speed of aging jumped up massively to, to 0.98. So that's the worst he's ever seen. So I get my 5-amino-1-MQ from Swiss Chems. I've been using them for two and a half years now. Good prices, decent quality. I mean, the color really gives it away with 5-amino. If it's that like bronzy, dark orange color, that's a good sign. Moving on to the supplement Apigenin, it's naturally occurring, but there's studies on it in mice and it does seem to lower CD38 and it's bioavailability, it's low, moderate, it does get absorbed, but you really wanna have like nice fatty food with it. And then when you look at mice with uh, CD38, that enzyme I keep talking about, when they knock out that gene that encodes for that in mice, they keep youthful NAD levels. So it is very important keeping that down. And unfortunately there's no consumer based test available for CD38, but the closest proxy is IL-6. And mine has always been high, Originally, I was in the 96th percentile. I did get it down into the 78th. I've had a little spike recently, but the, when I last did this test on the uh, towards the end of July, I did a cycle of the Senolytic FOXO4 DRI. And so it was only four days after, which is way too soon. That's why I mentioned about having a bit of a clear period. Anything that you're doing an intense cycle of, have a few weeks off before doing an epigenetic test. Well, yes, there are a few supplements out there that can help with lowering CD38. Apigenin has the added benefit of being neurocalming. So it can help with GABAergic signaling, therefore helping with uh, lowering glutamate, you know, excisotoxicity, that kind of thing. And so that's why doing it in the evening is beneficial. And even say there's other things like I, I supplement with taurine and the, they, again, that can help with GABA too. And I find them, they have synergy together. It can also help with estrogen modulation. So in some cases I've seen where people have come off their aromatase inhibitors when they're on TRT. Another added benefit is it can help with gut barrier support, obviously with age, these, these junction proteins break down and you get more endotoxins leaking into your bloodstream, setting off your immune system. So to summarize, yes, boosting NAD is super important. This coenzyme supporting mitochondria, you know, so not just energy, but the sutuin activity as well, like DNA repair. But these adverts pushing NMMN being like the savior and doing like a gram a day, so it could even cost you like 50 pounds a month and people expecting amazing results when they're not looking at their salvage pathway. I think that's very one dimensional and it means people get their finger burnt because they're expecting more from MNN than they're really getting. So I get my Apigenin from Vitality Pro. I've been using them for around about a year now. Really, really high end supplements. They do recent testing as well. Like the, the Apigenin was last tested in July, 2025. And so I do get a lot of other ones from Time Health and because uh, Vitality Pro, they run about 10% or so, a bit more expensive than Time Health, but it's not because they're trying to drive up profits, but it's because they do more recent testings that obviously cost money. They're very ethical people that run this company. In this case, their Apigenin actually works out cheaper than Time Health because it's 100 milligrams versus their 50 milligrams. It actually works out a better price. So it's like a win-win in this scenario. And with the link below, you get a 10% discount. So if you like that video, then check out this one on SLU PP332. It can uh, stimulate mitochondrial biogenesis, so a true exercise mimetic. 
or if you're someone who's worried about CD38, there's another modulator called luteolin. So you can get a double whammy effect doing that in the morning. It has potent anti-inflammatory effects. Also estrogen modulation, as well as being an antihistamine. Thanks for watching. See you next time.